What's up, peeps? It's me. I'm back. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's being smart. I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's keeping their heads on swivel and paying attention to what's going on. But most importantly, I hope everybody is staying on cold or getting on cold, trying to figure out what the cold is. Uh, and getting it together because it is so much going on that we definitely need to be on cold. We need to be watching each other's backs. We need to be circling our wagons. Um, we need to be calling out these folks with this uh, coonery and buffoonery and all of that. Um, most definitely. But um, I just came tonight. I know it's, I know it's, it's 3 one a.m. over here on the East Coast. I mean, you know, y'all know I'm down here in the South in, in, in North Carolina, North Kakalaki. Um, but I just want to come and bring y'all uh, some of the latest information and I want to reiterate uh, some information that was in, I think it was in either one of the lives because I, I, I started doing lives now and there's two lives posted on this channel. Um, I want to bring y'all some information that I think I put in one of the lives, but I want to reiterate that information because it's very important. So, um, and at the end of this video, we'll do, we'll do a little bit of housekeeping because I've decided uh, 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 what times to do my lives and I've, and I've decided how to work my schedule out as far as the lives is concerned and all that. We'll get into that at the end of this video. Let me get right into this. Um, so the first update I want to bring y'all is I just want to bring y'all a little bit more information about uh, the Michael Corey Jenkins situation. Michael Corey Jenkins is the young black man that was shot in the mouth um, down in Rankin County, Mississippi by the six police officers. Him and his friend were in the house that, that Wednesday night. The police bust in with no warrant. Uh, uh, nobody had said anything about they had any warrant. As, as, as a matter of uh, fact, Malik Shabazz is uh, the attorney working with them, and he said that there was no warrant. They went in accusing these two young black men of dating white girls and selling drugs. They were uh, immediately arrested and handcuffed. Then they were beaten. They were tased. Um, they had eggs thrown at them. Um, they were waterboarded with milk, and you know, waterboarding is that torture thing that they use where they hold your head back, put a towel over your face, or what, and just cut and just pour water down in your face, making you feel like you're gonna drown. Um, they were waterboarded. I mean, this torture is so bad that, that the United States government had to ban it, had to uh, in because in, in Iraq because of all that was going on, and not only that, but they were also SA. And you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to learn how to <laughs> how to follow some of these guidelines and use coding and code words. But uh, they were attempt well, it was an, an attempted essay, and you'll hear that in just a minute. So, um, um, Attorney Malik Shabazz did a um, an actual press conference. Last Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday that just passed on the 15th, he did a press conference. And uh, they talked about all of this, and, and they talked about how the, D, the DOJ and the feds are coming in now to investigate. Uh, uh, the State Bureau of Investigation is investigating, and all of that. Um, let me see if I can find that article right quick, because if I can find that article right quick, I'll read a little bit of it for you. If I can't, I'll pull it up. Okay. Yes. Hold on, y'all. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Let me just let me just read a little bit of it. And of course, I'll have this article as well as all the rest of the articles that I read from. All this information will be listed down in the description box. But um, this came out um, February the 15th, 2023. Uh, that was last Wednesday when, they, when um, the, uh, Malik Shabazz and the Black Lawyers for Justice had this press conference down in, um, in Mississippi. Uh, it says, Feds opened civil rights probe after deputies shot shoot Michael Curry um, Jenkins. 
The U.S. Justice Department said Wednesday it is investigating possible civil rights violations by the Mississippi Sheriff's Department after a drug raid last month left a black man with a bullet wound to the face. There is a stark, uh, there is a stark discrepancy in how police say the January 24th incident unfolded and what lawyers for the family of Michael Curry Jenkins say occurred. The lawyers claim it was racially motivated, a, a racially motivated attack while police say the shooting occurred after someone, remember that word, someone pointed a gun at deputies during the late night raid at a home in Rankin County just east of the state capital of Jackson. Attorneys for Jenkins, 32, said he was critically injured by white Rankin County deputies. Jenkins was released from the hospital Tuesday and attended a news conference Wednesday where he nodded affirmatively when his lawyer, Malik Shabazz, asked if deputies had beaten him and shot him in the mouth. This is deliberate. This is drawn out. This is unheard of, Shabazz told reporters. There was another man involved. His name was Eddie Terrell Parker. He was also beaten uh, uh, and, and tased and all of that. Shabazz said the next 90 minutes, Sheriff, uh, Deputy Sheriffs punched Jenkins and Parker and repeatedly used tasers on them that while they were handcuffed. Um, uh, it says there's no recovery of the gun. They, they couldn't get it in, in the article. It says they, they, they don't say anything about anybody recovering a gun. Uh, Jenkins was charged with assaulting an officer and drug possession. That's the one who was shot in the mouth. Parker has been charged with possessing a para paraphernalia and disorderly conduct. So neither one of them have a drug. So there was no drugs on either one of them. But this was supposed to be a drug raid. Same thing with Breonna Taylor, remember? They went up in her house at 1 o'clock in the morning talking about it was a drug raid. Talking about they were going in there looking for drugs because she had been under, under investigation. Well, that's what they're saying here, that these young men had been under investigation and it was a drug raid. Uh, it says in, in a news release on January 25th, the Bureau said the deputies were conducting a narcotics, a narcotics investigation when they entered the home. The Bureau said the shooting occurred after someone pointed a gun toward the deputies. The statement does not say whether a weapon was recovered at the scene. Okay, someone. Who is the someone? It was only two men in there. Michael Jenkins and, 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 and Terrell. Those were the only two men in there. And you don't know out of them two men which one of them pointed a gun at you? And how did anybody have time to assault anybody when you immediately handcuffed them once you busted in? You immediately handcuffed them and commenced to start beating them and tasing them and all of that. So... Like I said, I'm not going to read all this, but uh, he had the press conference, and this is the first that um, that I've heard since the press conference, so I want y'all to listen to the latest uh, video that he put up on Instagram. This is uh, Attorney Malik uh, Shabazz, so I want y'all to listen, and listen very carefully um, to this. Hold on. After being tortured and humiliated for 90 minutes, remember the name, Michael Corey Jenkins. Say his name, Michael Corey Jenkins. Rankin County, Mississippi deputies are wicked. They attempted to kill Michael Jenkins by putting a gun inside his mouth and pulling the trigger after six white deputies broke into the rural residence in Rankin County, Mississippi on January 25th, terrorizing Jenkins and brother Eddie Terrell Parker. Now, let me say this. Um, You'll see the pictures in the video. You'll see the pictures where I have taken the pictures and I have kind of blown them up a little bit so you can see uh, just a little bit of evidence of what's going on. In one of the pictures, you'll see the door has been busted open. You'll see where the, um, where the door has, uh, uh, has been uh, pulled from the, from the, uh, the, the what, what do you call it, y'all? The molding and all of that on the casing around the door. You'll see all that broke up. You'll see how, uh, how, how the inside of the house has been trashed. Uh, in, in one picture in the video, um, in his video, uh, you'll see blood on the bed, uh, you'll see eggs on the floor, and um, you'll see something else, uh, too, if you watch very carefully. But a lot of those pictures, I have blown them up, and I have put them in this video. So y'all pay attention to those, you know, pause the video and pay attention to these um, 
to the pictures in the video. Let's keep, let's continue. After the six white deputies repeatedly beat him up, repeatedly tased him, repeatedly punched and kicked the man for two hours, during which they even threw eggs at the men and used waterboarding tactics on the men and even attempted to assault the men with a dildo. That's what I said. Then a deputy shot my... So, y'all heard that for yourself. That wasn't me saying it. I didn't say it. That's coming out of the mouth of uh, Attorney Malik Shabazz. That they, they attempted to uh, essay to assault these young men with... Um, a dildo. Okay? Michael Jenkins inside the mouth with his gun. Now, black lawyers for justice and myself have picked up the case, and now the feds are on the case, and the deputies are on the verge of indictment, just like the officers in the Tyree Nichols case. So the battle for justice is on. Support Michael Corey Jenkins. He needs medical help. He needs your help. He's a good man, he has no felonies, he wasn't running, fighting back, shot in the mouth while handcuffed after being tortured and humiliated for 90 minutes. So that's it, that's, that, that's the latest of what's going on. You heard um, uh, um, Attorney Malik Shabazz say that these men are on the verge of indictment, that these six police officers are on the verge of indictment. So um, the black community has got to, we've got to band together, we've got to get on code, we've got to circle around this, we've got to share this information. Because remember, none of this was being put out. None of this was being put out. No local media was covering it. National media was not covering it. Nobody was covering it. Folks was running around talking about it. It was a scam, it was a lie, the whole nine yards. I was one of the first ones in the new black media to actually bring attention to this. And I learned it from, uh, 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 I think somebody had posted something about it on social media. And I got curious, so I went looking. I couldn't find anything. But remember I told y'all all I could find was, was, was YouTube videos. And there's a whole lot of stuff on TikTok about it. So um, I followed the trail, and it led me to this white girl, this, this white woman's channel. Her name is, uh, 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 I think it's True, True Crimes with Shannon. It led me to her channel, and from her channel, I was led to the Pascal Show, which is a black gentleman that does, uh, uh, he's a YouTube uh, uh, content creator. And that's how I found out what I found out. And then I started digging. I went to Malik Shabazz's page on, on Instagram. And that's when it all started coming together. I went to all these Twitter accounts that had all these hashtags. And that's when all the information started coming together. And I just kept on going to Malik's page every day until I got more information. And finally, finally now, it's starting to get just a little bit of coverage. But it's only getting a little bit of coverage. And it's up to us to make sure that it gets the court coverage it's supposed to have. Because if the Memphis Five, and that's what I call them, the five, the five beasts that beat and, 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 and killed uh, Tyree, uh, Tyree Nichols, if they could be uh, fired, charged, arrested within a number of days, I mean, from the time the incident took place on January the 7th until uh, until they were arrested. I think they were arrested. They were fired and arrested. Well, I know the charges came down on them on January the 26th. So in less than 20 days, they were being charged. They were being charged and they were arrested. Oh, and, 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 and a little bit of information on that. They have all, all five have pleaded not guilty. All five have pleaded not guilty. So just remember that all five of them have pleaded not guilty. But um, if, if 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 we could get the firing, we could get the indictment, we could get the charges, and we can get them arrested in, in the space of 19 days, then we can do that in this situation as well. These police officers can go down the same way. But in that article that I just read, you notice they don't say anything about the articles, the, uh, the officers being fired. They don't say anything about whether or not they're on administrative leave. None of that. So we're going to have to push this and we're going to have to let them know. Y'all set the precedent in the, in, the, in the Tyree Nichols case. And you keep trying to act like it's not about race. Okay, well, if it's not about race, 
then these six police officers need to be looking at the same thing that the Memphis Five looking at. The exact same thing. But this is just what's going on. And like I said, the link to this will be down in the description box. And, and some of the pictures that are in his video will actually be in my video. So like I said, y'all pause them and take a good look at those pictures. And, and you can see that it's, it's a whole lot went on in that house that night. Okay? All right. Now, I'm going to move on because I don't want to be here too long because it's late. But uh, I want to move on and I want to touch base on this again because I think this is very important. And um, this is the story about Tyree Nichols' family going to the United Nations and filing an urgent appeal with the United Nations. This is coming from The Hill. This was February 10th, 23. Family of Tyree Nichols files urgent appeal with the United Nations. The family of Tyree Nichols has filed an urgent appeal to the United Nations requesting action regarding the torture and extrajudicial killing, extrajudicial killing of Nichols. Today we filed an urgent appeal before the United Nations asking it to condemn the tragic killing of, Ty of Tyree Nichols to demand transparency from the police department and to demand that Officer Preston Hemphill and all officers that participated in the incident are criminally charged, attorneys for the family said in a statement. Um, I think there were eight other officers that they said. Uh, and, I, and I'll see if I can find the article and I'll list it in the description box if I can find it. But there were eight other officers that were fired and they were, they, they were, they were, they were charged, but they were charged with violating uh, uh, things like uh, police policy and departmental policy and stuff like that. They, they didn't, they, they're not facing any kind of criminal charges. The only ones facing any kind of criminal charges are the Memphis Five. And so his parents have gone to the, to the, to the United Nations to say, okay, the rest of them need to be criminally charged as well. The video evidence shows that all who were involved in Tyree's death committed apprehensive acts that require international condemnation, they continue. According to the United Nations, urgent appeals are used to seek intervention to cease the violation of loss of life, life-threatening situations, or imminent or ongoing damage of a grave nature. The goal is to ensure state authorities intervene or prevent a human rights prevent a human rights violation as quickly as possible. So that's about it for that. But uh, I just wanted to remind y'all that his family is moving forward, and and, and they're not. Thank goodness it doesn't look like they're just sitting around waiting to see what Biden or what anybody here in the United States is going to do about this. They're taking it to the next level. And that's a good thing. They are taking it to the next level. You understand what I'm saying? And hopefully, because if I'm not mistaken, I think I heard that uh, Ben Crump and uh, Malik Shabazz kind of worked together on certain things. So hopefully there will be something that Malik Shabazz will think about doing also in this Michael Corey Jenkins case. Taking it before the United Nations. Filing this urgent appeal uh, before the United Nations. Because the United States, uh, the, the, the United States doesn't want that type of attention. The United States does not want that type of attention uh, 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 from other countries around the world, especially when they try to get on this high horse about human rights violations and all of this with other countries. And then, you know, all of these countries find out, okay, well, this is the kind of stuff that's really going on behind closed doors in the United States. So I really, really hope that it's something that Malik Shabazz and the, and the other black attorneys are thinking about doing in this Michael Jen uh, Jenkins case as well, okay? So I just wanted to refresh y'all memory of that. I mean, yeah, refresh your memory about that. Also, as far as the Tyree Nichols case is concerned, I thought this was very, very interesting. Now, this came out in Fox News. Jessica Chasman, Chasmar, Fox News. What's the date on this? Uh, February 12, 2023, right? Um... Jamal Bowman says Tyree Nichols killed by white supremacy after fading beating by black cops. Bowman says at the root of it is the dehumanization of black people. Lord have mercy. 
He had to add that people of color, and particularly black men. He was fine until he added that, that, that people of color. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You try to give these these um black politicians an opportunity, and, 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 and they'll... Uh, uh, cool it up every time. They gonna add some kind of little cool spice to it every time. That's the reason why he had to add that little people of color. It can't never just be about us when it is just about us. Cause you don't hear this happening to nobody else. They ain't going around putting uh, 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 police officers putting guns in the mouths of Asian people or 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 or, 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 or Hispanic people or, or or Middle Eastern people or, or any so. What, what is this? Talking about people of color. This ain't happening to people of color. This is happening to black folks. Like he said, particularly black men. But he could have left that people of color out of there. But anyway, let's keep going. Um, and listen to the video because the video is a, um, it's, there's, a, there's an audio with it, a video with it. And listen to that because it's important. It's coming from a, a, a dean of uh, Columbia's School of Journalism is, is, is actually uh, chiming in on this. But anyway, Representative Jamal Bowman said a Memphis man who was fatally beaten by black police officers was killed by white supremacy and America in a recent fundraising email by his re-election campaign. Tyree Nichols should be alive today. Instead, like so many others, he was killed by police, killed by white supremacy, killed by America, read the campaign email sent Monday on behalf of the New York Democrat, the New York Post first reported. This is black terror, the email said. We feel it every day. We feel it more today. Too many victims to name. Too much hurt to explain. Too many tears to, too, too many tears to, to normalize. Too normalized, too numb. From 1619 to the present day, we live in a constant state of terror. Nichols, who was black, died after he was brutally beaten by five now former officers with the Memphis Police Department doing a traffic stop. Okay, I'm not going into all of that. Um, all the ex-officers except Bean have infractions in their work records ranging from using physical force during an arrest to failing to report a domestic violence incident. All five were also named in a lawsuit and accused of beating a black army veteran days before their encounter with Nichols. So, um, that's another thing that, that, that lets us know that this wasn't personal. That this was just their uh, mode of operation. This is just the way they got down. This is the way this Scorpion unit, this is just the way they got down. You understand what I'm saying? That's, that's what it was. Because we've had other folks that came forward and said that they had violent interactions with this Scorpion unit. Okay? In his fundraising email, Bowman claimed Nichols' death is the result of an operating system that dehumanizes black people. Police brutality happens in New, in New York, in Memphis, in L.A., in cities across the country, small towns across the country, and throughout American history, the message read, according to the Post. At the root of it is the dehumanization of black people, and particularly black men. This kind of white supremacy is not just about skin color, however. It's about ideology. It's the operating system on which too much of our society is based. We need my fellow members of Congress and President Biden to provide historic leadership on this issue. Oh, Lord. We cannot maintain this status quo. We must lead for black lives and lead for black humanity, added the email, which included a donate, a donate link. So they trying to throw that in there to try to act like, you know, it was something wrong with him asking for donations or whatever. Anyway, now remember, this, this, this was written by Fox, uh, Fox News. Um, while the officers accused of killing Nichols are black, progressives have claimed Nichols' death can be blamed on white supremacy due to institutional, institutional racism that treats black people as inferior. The University of Minnesota's Center for Anti-Racism anti Research for Health Equity issued a statement arguing that the killings, terror, and oppression are a direct result of anti-black racist attitudes, policies, procedure, and leadership that pervade our institutions.
Ben and Jerry's, the progressive Vermont ice cream maker that routinely weighs in on social justice issues, argued that the fact that the officers who murdered Tyree are black shows how deeply embedded white supremacy is in American culture and specifically in policing. You do not have to be white to act in servitude of white supremacy, Ben and Jerry's tweeted. It is more powerful than any one individual or group of people. It is the air we breathe and built into the systems that surround us. So I also have this listed down in the description box so y'all can read this article and can follow up on this article. But uh, at least uh, Jamal Bowman uh, is saying something that makes sense. At least he's telling the truth. You understand what I'm saying? These police officers, yeah, they're black, but they're a part of a racist white supremacy system. We already know where policing got its origins. We already know policing got its origins in the United States from slave patrols. And in order for you to, to really, 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 really um, achieve what you might be wanting to achieve in that system, we already talked about it. You gotta be willing what you gotta be willing to do what you gotta do. And they were willing to do it. Because they stopped being black and they considered themselves blue. Now, blue don't consider them blue, but anyway. But, um, so that's basically what's going on right now as far as uh, the Michael Corey Jenkins case and as far as um, the Tyree Nichols case. Now, there's one more case that I want to bring your attention to, and this is real, real interesting. Okay, it's not going to let me read it. But um there was a cop named Alexander, let me let me let me find it somewhere else. Uh, hold on, let me find it. Okay, here it is. Um, I got this article from WDSU.com. Uh, February the 17th. It was updated at uh, 8.02 a.m. yesterday, February the 17th. Shreveport police officer, uh, officer arrested, accused of shooting, killing a man. A white Louisiana police officer was arrested Thursday for fatally shooting an unarmed black man who was trying to flee police responding to a domestic disturbance call earlier this month, authorities said. After reviewing evidence and footage from officers' body-worn body cameras, state troopers charged Shreveport, Shreveport police officer Alexander Tyler, 23, with negligent homicide in the death of Alonzo Bagley, 43. Louisiana State Police on Thursday released body camera footage of the fatal encounter as well as audio from the 911 recording uh, reporting the initial disturbance. Officers responded to the disturbance around 10.50 p.m. on February 3rd in Shreveport, a city in northwest Louisiana. In the 911 call, a person who identified herself as Bagley's wife said her husband was loaded on something and threatening her and her daughter. So... She made that call and now she ain't got to worry about him being loaded on nothing or threatening nobody or nothing else because now he gone. Y'all done been told, uh, y'all done been told about calling the police on folk. Tyler and another unidentified officer, here we go with another unidentified officer, 
officer. Tyler and another unidentified officer arrived at the apartment where Bagley opened the door holding a glass bottle with brown liquor, liquid. Okay? Bagley said he had to put away his dog, walk to the back of the apartment onto a balcony, jump to the ground outside, and ran. The officers then began chasing him. Upon rounding the corner of the building, Officer Tyler observed Mr. Bagley and fired one shot from his service uh, weapon, which struck Mr. Bagley in the chest. Colonel Lamar Davis, the, uh, the superintendent of Louisiana State Police, said at a news conference earlier this month, in the video, Bagley can be heard saying, Oh God, you shot me, as he slumped to the ground. The officers immediately rendered aid as one of the men, it is unclear who, said, no, no, sir, sir, hey, 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 no, no. Didn't want him to die because he realized that he, 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 had, he had, that was the moment he realized that he had effed up. Family members of Bagley have filed a $10 million lawsuit against Tyler. The lethal force used against Mr. Bagley was unjustified, unreasonable, excessive, and in violation of Mr. Bagley's rights of the United States Constitution and the laws of the state of Louisiana, the lawsuit said, which was filed by Bagley's wife, mother, and stepdaughter. So the wife gonna call and get the man killed, then she gonna file a $10 million lawsuit. Black men, pay attention. She gonna call the police, get the man killed, and now she filing a $10 million lawsuit. Okay, the family has hired a Louisiana attorney, Ronald Haley, who has represented other high profile clients, including the family of Ronald Green, a black motorist, whose 2019 death in state police custody in North Louisiana prompted lawsuits and criminal charges against law enforcement officers. During a Thursday afternoon press conference with some of Bagley's relatives, Haley said the fact that Bagley Fred fled from police should not equate to a death sentence. Flight does not mean shoot to kill, Haley said. Flight does not mean you are the judge, jury, and execu executioner, and that's what happened. That was what happened in this case, and it is an accident that we see far too often in the state. It is, it is an incident, not accident. It is an incident that we see far too often around this country. It was not immediately clear Thursday whether Tyler had hired an attorney who, would, who could comment on his behalf. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Melissa Maddy, a spokesperson for the Louisiana State Pol uh, Police, said that the investigation is ongoing. So, he's been arrested. Yep, he's been arrested. He's been charged, uh, and he's been arrested. So, we'll see how that goes. But like I said, you make this telephone call, you get this black man killed. You understand what I'm saying? Because you talk about he threatening you and all of this, and he unloaded on something and all of that. So, it's already a dangerous situation, but they coming in prepared for this man to be high and, 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 and probably crazy and maybe waving a gun or whatever, and you get him killed. But now you want to um, file a lawsuit. <laughs> but anyway, um, so, so, so that's that on that situation. Now, um, I could talk about... Uh, this other thing, this other case that I want to talk about, I could talk about Whoopi, but uh, we've been here too long tonight, it's getting late, I'm ready to go to bed, um, and I just wanted to bring y'all up to date on what's going on as far as some of these police, police shootings and, and Tyree Nichols, and, and, and definitely for us to push ahead and get more information out about Michael Curry Jenkins. Because uh, 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 luckily he's still alive. Luckily those two young men are still alive. Him and, and Terrell. Um, so they, they need our support. I'll have the GoFundMe down in the uh, description box for um, Michael Corey Jenkins. Because he has a long road to recovery. Uh, I'm still not exactly sure whether they sold the tongue back on or whether he actually lost his tongue. I'm still not exactly sure. Because... Um, Based on what they say Malik Shabazz said at the press conference, he's still claiming that this young man lost his tongue. 
So I'm still not too sure about that. But um, the, the part about the essay, the attempted essay, that finally came out. So that, that finally came out. I had heard it. Um, I had heard it, it being said that the father even admitted it. Um, I even heard somebody that was talking. I don't know whether they were talking to a news reporter that never reported the news or what. But they were talking to somebody and that person had also said that there was an attempted uh, uh, assault. Attempted SA, sexual assault. Um, but now, um, Malisha Bass has actually come out and publicly said that yes, there was a, that, that was attempted on um, these young men. So I don't know whether it was both of them or just one of them. But um, like I said, just look at those pictures and pay attention to the pictures in the video. In this video, as well as Malik Shabazz's video. But yeah, that's all I got for y'all tonight. Uh, I'm going to cut this one short. We'll talk about some of this other stuff tomorrow. But let me, um, let's do some housekeeping right quick. This is what I have decided to do. What I have decided to do is I have decided to do lives on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'll do lives. I'll come. I'll, I'll, I'll um. I'll come on live at eight o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We'll do some some live broadcasts. Um. There's also, and I want y'all to to get down in the comments and give me your opinion of this. I'm also thinking about maybe once a month doing a showcase on a black artist, whether they be authors or whether they be uh, uh, independent music artists or whether they be poets. Or, or, or whether they be painters or sculptors or whatever, but just some kind of artist. And I'm not talking about these mainstream artists. I'm not talking about these celebrities. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about giving some exposure and doing some features on um, on some, some independent folks that are doing their own thing and they're not trying to be mainstream or, or, they, or, or maybe they are trying to be mainstream, but they haven't made it there yet and they just need some exposure. So I'm thinking about maybe doing that once a month, you know, and when we don't have artists, maybe there's a particular black business. And I'm not talking about black meaning that there's a black front, front person, but all the funding is coming from the dominant society. No, when I say black, I mean black owned, black operated, and, and maybe we can do uh, a once a month, we can do a feature on a black owned business. But that's what I'm thinking about doing, and that's the direction that I'm thinking about taking the channel in. So, like I said, y'all leave your comments down in the description box and, and give me some ideas and let me know, you know, what y'all think about that. But like I said, I intend to go live on Thursdays, on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, okay, because I'm on the East Coast. So, um, and, and, and that'll be my schedule until I go back to work because, uh, I didn't tell y'all this because it, 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 it wasn't really all that important, but um, I lost my job when my car broke down. I lost my job, so I'm not working right now. So hopefully um, that'll give me the opportunity to, to build the channel, to get some lives because I've been experimenting with this live thing and all of that. And yes, there will come a time when I get my little set up and all that kind of stuff together. There will come a time when I might come on camera every once in a while. But it won't be often because this is not about me. I don't like to be seen. I have never liked to be seen. I like to be the force behind the scenes. Okay? But, yeah, we're going to do the lives on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 um, Eastern Standard Time. And then maybe two or three other days a week, we'll just upload videos. Okay? And like I said, get down in the description box and give me your uh, feelings as far as us doing this once a month feature thing on, on artists or, or black businesses or whatever. And, and any other suggestions that you might have. Um, all the information for this video, of course, will be linked down in the description box, as well as the GoFundMe for Michael Curry Jenkins, um, as well as all the information, my GoFundMe, and all the information on how to support the channel, the email for the channel. If, if there's anything particular you want me to talk about or anything that you want to tell me and you don't want to put it in the comments or whatever, the email for the channel is, it, it will be in the description box. Um, Y'all, please like this video. Uh, please share this video. Please share this information on and off social media. Uh, let folks know what's going on so that we can back these folks so that we can support these people. Um, yeah, and, I, and I'm going to bring this information to you tomorrow, too. Um, let me go ahead and tell y'all this now because it, 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 it's important. Let me do this right quick. Um, hold on. Let me find it. 
Let me find it. Here it is. I'm going to actually let y'all listen to it. Um, today is the 17th, right? Um, and they actually, today was the day that Courtney, that, that, that Farmer Courtney and his wife, uh, Nicole, the black ranchers down there in Colorado that are having such a hard time and being terrorized down there. Well, today was the day that they had their, um, their, um, their, um, gathering or, or their march or whatever to Denver, Colorado, to the capital to, uh, of Colorado, which is Denver. And, um, they went to the state's capital and, um, it was a big turnout, um, what I'm hearing is, uh, uh, and I'll have the link to this person's Twitter page down in the description box because uh, this person has most of the information on that. But uh, coming from Black Farmland Owners Matter, today was powered by the people, C.W. and Nicole Mallory. Appreciate our people who have supported this movement to save Freedom Acres Ranch and uh, Farming Peace, Five Dirty Racist Cop, um, Gilhart, we need an independent investigation into hate crimes. Um, and it shows several videos. This is a video of his wife talking. Okay. Okay. So powered by the people. 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 people are getting this black and brown from and this people of color from and all of that but what they don't realize is what they're doing is they're harming their own case against these white supremacists with all these black and brown because ain't no black and brown ain't this ain't happening to, br to brown folk this is happening to a black man and his black family on his black ranch So I wish somebody, and the, and the NAACP is there. You understand what I'm saying? But you know the, MW, the NAACP ain't going to step in and tell them, you know, to stop with the people of color and the black and brown and all of that because the, the NAACP ain't, ain't, ain't worth a cahoot to, uh, to black folks no way. But, um, but yeah, they, they out there. Oh, boom. No food. Farmer CW shut the streets down in Denver today. No food. CW. No food. You shut the street down. Yes, no, food. <laughs> no food. No food. No food. So yeah, I have this link in the description box, and, and y'all can go back and y'all can listen to um to 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 the, to the different excerpts of people talking, but um. But, but him and her really need to stop talking for a while. Him and his wife both need to stop talking and they need to get a spokesperson that's going you, you to speak truth to power. And the truth is, this is not happening to a brown community. Who is the brown? This is not happening to, to any brown. This ain't happening to white. This ain't happening to Latino. This ain't happening to Jewish. This, ain't ha this is happening to y'all. And y'all are black. And the reason why it's happening to you is because you're black. So, you know, they need to get a spokesperson that's going to go in and, and going to speak this thing the right way because some of the stuff that they're saying is actually doing their case and doing their situation more harm than good. So I hope if they're listening or I hope if anybody that knows them and that contacts them is listening, uh, you'll sit down and have a conversation with them and tell them, uh, you got to stop with the black and brown. You got to stop with the people of color. You got to stop with that. You got to stop trying to be politi uh, politically correct or whatever the case may be and just hit it for what it is. You being treated like this, you going through all of this simply because you're black. But I did want to let y'all know that they did have uh, 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 um, the, the pull-up. That's what they were calling it. They did have the pull-up today. In De at, at the Capitol in Denver, Colorado, and um, it appears that, that, that quite a people, quite a few people, showed up to support them, and we will continue to support them. But like I said, they just need somebody else.
to be their spokesperson to speak for them, they need to stop speaking and let somebody else that, 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 that knows what this is really all about and knows what it's going to take to get them what they really need to speak for them because they're they, they doing a little bit too much, okay? But um, I just wanted to bring y'all that. Like I said, uh, I'll have that link down in the description box as well so that y'all can go listen and y'all can go see. And, of course, we will continue to support. Of course, they still have their GoFundMe. So if, 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 I, if, I, if I remember to get it, I'll put that down in the description box as well. But, uh, yeah, it's just a lot going on that we need to know about. But like I said, y'all make sure that you share this video. Make sure you like this video. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we upload and when we go live. Um, keep your head on swivel. Keep your power tools at the ready. Be smart. Be safe. But more importantly, be on code. Be on code because that's what it's going to take for us, okay? All right. Uh, that's it, and I'll get back with y'all later. Y'all have a good one.